And we're just about to get things underway. We've got Matty Maysfield on the left, who we featured previously twice through Swiss, here in top four, versus Rob Spiller on the right. Rob's playing Night March. Matty, as we've seen before, is playing Dragon Rayquaza. Matty's going to start Giratina. Rob starts a Joltik. Uh, Giratina is really strong in this matchup for Matty. If he's able to power it up quick enough, uh, it's he's got potential to get it first turn if he draws really well. And if that is a possibility for him, uh, then that pretty much wins him the game against Night March. Uh, unfortunately, he has started with it. He would have liked to start with a Reshiram here. Rob's going to train his mail. It'll be interesting to see what he takes. He probably wants to get as many Battle Compressors off first turn as quickly as possible. Uh, a lot of Matty's Pokemon are quite bulky, so they do take a lot of Night Marches in the discard pile to hit for those knockouts. Uh, so it's definitely going to be tough for Rob to see if he can hit, reach those big numbers. Um, of course, we've seen Matty's deck very powerful, very quick, and... As I said previously, a lot of the Pokemon in there, that Dragon Rayquaza has got 230 HP, hits for 300 damage, and those are some big numbers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Night March can keep up with that. Uh, obviously, Matty's not going to be needing to hit for 300 damage. Uh, it'll be discarding his energy. He's best to just get a Shrine of Memories out and start hitting for 130 instead. Um, if that's the case, that'd be great for Matty. As I said previously, though, that Giratina... Uh, is definitely what Matty would want to hit as early as possible, if it's possible for him to. Uh, if not, even Reshiram in this matchup is quite a good attacker. It's able to knock out a Shaman even. And as we can see, Rob's mustn't have a good start. He's going to go for a Trainer's Mail here. Uh, Puzzle of Time, sorry, to look at the top three cards and rearrange them. DC onto that Joltik and a pass. Matty has potential to get a one-hit KO knockout here. It'll be interesting to see if he can get it. He's going to just try and draw as many cards as he can. He's put that uh, the uh, Rayquaza Spirit Link onto that Giratina, and there we see a drop of two Megas, so he's really going for it here. Um, even just a Drudigon and a Reshiram and a Fire Energy, he can power up that Shaman, and if he's got the Fire Energies, he can just Sky Return for the game here. And it doesn't look like he... Oh, here we go. Shaman for four... Uh, three, sorry. No, he needs... You know, two fire. So he's going to see the Scorched Earth. I actually think he'll also need the energy to retreat or a switch of some sort. Yeah, so he's going to retreat into Reshiram. Yeah, he's, he needed a switch of some sort there. So we're just going to see some Turbo Blazes come down here. Well, that's unfortunate for Matty. If he was able to get a switch, he would have had the game there. He had the two energies. Uh, so we're just going to see a Sycamore from Rob. So Rob was lucky to draw out of it. Um, I don't think he drew a basic off of that either. He might have drawn an Ultra Bowl of some sort. or Wait, oh, there's a Joltik. So we're going to see a Trainer's Mail. Probably looking for an Ultra Bowl if he can get it. Uh, maybe start to use the Shaman. Get some more Night Marches in the discard pile. And knock out this Reshiram. Getting ahead in the prize game early against Matty is crucial, in my opinion. Um, Matty will probably just likely go up into that another Reshiram, Turbo Blaze, and if he has the Double Dragon, well, we're going to be seeing that Giratina become active. So Rob is going to need to get another DC down this turn. If he doesn't, he will pretty much lose his game. I don't see a way of him getting out of it if that's not uh, the case. We're going to see an Escape Rope. Matty's just going to swap his Reshirams. DC onto that active Joltik, a Floatstone, and a Shaman for 5. And I think we just saw an Enhanced Hammer in Rob's hand. If he plays Enhanced Hammer, that could be a pretty big card in this. It might be able to buy him a turn against the Giratina. Uh, yeah, there is an Enhanced Hammer in his hand. Uh, it's a really interesting card to see, and we'll have to see how effective it is in this matchup. And I don't think Rob has enough Night Marches in there to be hitting for a knockout. I think he only has the three Lampants, if I remember correctly. So there we go. There's a Joltik, and just retreats into the other lone Joltik. Uh, he probably figures at this point, if that Giratina becomes active, um, then he'll want to have as many uh, DCs down as possible. If he was to lose one this turn, that wouldn't be good for him. Matty, again, just going to dig and use another Sycamore here. I'm not too sure what he's really going for. He's probably just looking to set up this Giratina this turn uh, and then hope that Rob isn't able to get a Revenge knockout by one of those Joltics. Uh, we're going to see a puzzle of time from Matty just to rearrange the top three cards. Unfortunately, Matty has filled up his bench as well, meaning we're not going to see a Rayquaza come down, and we're just seeing a pass from Matty. So it looks like Matty isn't even able to capitalize on Rob's bad draws either. 
He's also, whilst being able to Sycamore twice in a row, hasn't seen anything that he can really play. Fighting Fury Belt on that Joltek and then a Sycamore from Rob once again. So this could be the turn that Rob can really come back here, knock out this restroom and get ahead in the prize game. We're going to see the town map. Uh, so we see a Lampin, a Pumpkaboo, a Shaman by the looks of things. I think that's a Trainer's Mail Judge and I can't make it that bottom card there. Might be a BS Seeker by the looks of things. We're going to see a Battle Compressor here from Rob. Discarding some more Nine Marches, you could assume. Uh, if he's able to get... Oh no, that's the perfect numbers. If he has a DCE in hand, uh, that Fighting Fury Belt will mean he can knock out that restroom this turn. Uh, Matty really needs to look for something big here. He needs to attack with that Giratina next turn. Uh, even then, like, there's going to be three Joltics powered up if he's got another DC here, which he does. It also looks like he's playing four different arts of the DC, uh, which is annoying, in my personal opinion. But we're going to see the Night March here for the knockout, and it looks like Rob is going to be taking that lamp. And up comes the Reshiram, double Dragon Energy, Turbo Blaze the active, Fear Seeker. For a judge, uh, this could be huge here. Uh, Rob did take that lamp and Matt is going to shuffle that lamp and back into his deck. Rob probably have the Ultra Bowl and some other things there to get rid of that lamp and put into the discard pile and add to his Nine Marches. And now that judge from Matty might hinder that strategy just a bit. And we are going to be seeing a Giratina come active. Uh, if that Giratina is able to last a couple of turns, um, you know, it'll be able to slow Rob down. Uh, unfortunately, he has had the chance to get three DCEs down. Now two. So, with both of these Joltics, he should be able to take down this Tina. Uh, he's currently hitting for uh, 140, I believe. So, if he's able to get just two more Night Marchers into the discard pile, or a Fighting Fury Belt on that bench Joltik and one more Night Marcher, then that'll be a knockout. We'll see, can he pull that off this turn? Uh, otherwise, it might just be the Nokia, uh, the Night March, and then in the next turn, bring up that other Joltik and attack with that one there. Um, Manny needs to really work on getting another attacker going, though. Uh, if he's able to get a Dragon Rayquaza down, I don't think he plays any Super Odds. His only way of getting them back is through means of uh, Puzzle of Time. So, Rob is going to go for a teammates. We saw he took an Ultra Ball. I think he showed Matty. Uh, you don't have to with the teammates. Uh, it just says, take any two cards. You don't have to reveal them. Looks like he's debating either the Enhanced Hammer or the Shaman, or maybe even the, the fourth Double Colors. It looks like that was a Battle Compressor, though, which was a very good call if he's able to knock out this Giratina this turn. Uh, he's going to leave Matty with nothing on his bench to come up and get this Joltik back, uh, knock this Joltik out. If that's the case, uh, Matty could be in some trouble. He, we know he took the Battle Compressor. He ultra bought away a Lamp, and so he's now only 10 damage off a Knockout. Pokemon Catcher from Rob. Uh, which, interesting card. I personally like playing the Catcher in Night March. And it's a Hez. He's going to bring up the Shaman. Uh, so maybe Rob wasn't able to get all the things he needed to knock out that Giratina. Uh, that's an interesting play from Rob here as well. If I don't know if Matty plays Xerosic, but if he does, he might be able to just Xerosic that double colors from the bench Joltik. And then just use this Giratina to get the knockout here. However, I feel like Rob has played this smart. I don't think Matty plays any way of discarding that double colors. I think Rob has played this smart. He knows that this Joltik's going up, uh, going to get knocked out. And if that's the case, then he'll be able to bring out that bench Joltik and get the revenge knockout. Uh, onto that Giratina, and then allow him to play his double color synergies once again. So that was a very good play from him. Not only did he take an extra two prizes from that Shaman, uh, he's also going to take another two prizes this turn and really put Maddie behind. Um, Maddie will need to think of something quick to come back from this, otherwise it would be a game one win for Rob. We're going to see a trainer's mail here for a puzzle of time. Uh, he could even be like just trying to get the puzzle of times for those catches to get the easy knockout uh but he's will go down to one prize card this turn and you know there's nothing on maddie's bench that he can't knock out so as long as uh, he probably got the puzzle of time actually to get the double colors back unless he already has it in hand um it's it's gonna be tough for maddie i can't see any way that he can come back from this 
because he has to knock out that Joltik. He has to try and ensure that Rob isn't able to somehow get another double collars down at all costs. We're going to see a startling megaphone, probably just lowering his hand size, getting rid of some cards he doesn't want if he was being judged this turn from Matty, then that was a good call from him. We're going to see a Reshiram coming down, two puzzle of times. Uh, we're going to see the Giratina and the double dragon come back. And this is going to be huge. Can Matty pull this off? We're going to see the Sycamore. He's going to need a switch and a fire energy. And we could see another Chaos Wheel, and that could win Matty the game. There would be no way for Rob to come back from that. Did he get it? Uh, it doesn't look like he has. He's definitely got the fire energy. It doesn't look like he got the switch. He might have the escape rope, which isn't enough. He needs a way to switch out this Reshiram here. Uh, he does have the free retreat. Uh, so it looks like he's going to free retreat. And then there's the escape rope. Uh, that's unfortunate. If he was able to get that switch, he was right. And Matty's going to scoop. So he's a couple of cards away from that switch there. He just wasn't able to get it. I was very close, though. If, if Matty was able to pull that off, it would have been definitely a game one to him. Uh, Rob wouldn't have been able to respond with that. So there we go. Uh, game number one is going to go to Rob. On to game two. Uh, Matty yeah, needs to get a quicker starter start than what he did, especially against Nine March. Nine March is so quick. If you're not able to keep up with the speed, then they're just going to roll over you completely, as we just saw there. Uh, Matty was able to get a couple of quick knockouts, but again, Rob was able to get three double colors down before Giratina could attack. Even with that Giratina attacking, Rob was still able to hit for the knockout. Uh, and even with, if Matty was able to pull off that last play there, that would have been great for him. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have lost that game, in my opinion. Uh, Rob doesn't play any basic energies. His only hope was like an enhanced hammer, and then hope Matty didn't have another double dragon energy somehow. Or maybe like the catcher to stole up the Hydreigon or something. So now both players are just going to get ready for game number two. I assume Matty will probably choose to go first here. Uh, it's always best for most decks to go first. And in the case of Matty's Dragon Ray deck, he really wants to get that set up as quickly as possible. And there's not much of a chance of him getting a one uh, turn one knockout on anything. Uh, so it's best for him to go first here. Which I assume he'll do. I was probably hoping to get a quicker Giratina. Uh, but the other problem with a quick Giratina is if the Nine March player also has a good start. We know Rob plays that Pokemon catcher. If Matty leaves a Giratina on his bench, Rob might still be able to pick it off and make Matty's first turn practically useless. But we'll have to see what happens. We're going to see a mulligan from Rob. I didn't see what Matty started with. Ideally for him, it would be a Reshiram. So Matty is going to get one extra card from the mulligan. And can Rob draw a basic here? It looks like he's going to start again with the Joltik. Which is probably not his preferred starter in this, uh, just because there's so many things that Matty can quickly power up. Uh, even a Shaman can knock out a Joltik, and he can easily power up a Shaman. It's just one Fire Energy and a Turbo Blaze. We're going to see a Puzzle of Time from Matty uh, to rearrange a top three. Uh, that usually means that your hand isn't good, especially if it's the first card you're playing. Uh, there's a Quasar Spirit Link. Matty probably doesn't see Red Quasar being a big threat against Night March. Uh, Matty has played this deck several times before. He's very experienced with the Dragon Red Quasar deck. He played it at Worlds last year. Uh, so he knows how to play this Night March match. We're going to see a Shaman there for one, and just the Ultra Ball. Getting rid of the Dragon Ray and the BS Seeker. He might have to take another Shaman here. Uh, looks like he's going to go for that Giratina, actually. So he might already have like the Supporter in hand to draw him some more cards. We'll have to see. I know he's got a Fire Energy. He's going to attach for turn, and then pass. Okay. So as I said, Rob, this turn, ideally would love to knock out that Giratina. Um, if he's able to flip heads on a catcher, that means he still has his supporter for the turn, which would likely be a Sycamore. He is going to need a Fighting Fury Belt and eight Night Marches in the discard pile for that to be a, real, for that to be a possibility, or nine Night Marches, which does sound quite tough, but the power and speed of this Night March deck, it isn't impossible. It's been done before. 
Uh, as we see right now, Rob is already getting rid of three night marches. Uh, looks like he's actually going to get rid of a pumpkin boot. Does that mean he's prized lampants or he has them in his hand? Either way, that's not good. You never really want to prize those lampants or have them in your opening hand. Especially have them in your opening hand. Uh, that's unfortunate. Unless you've got the Ultra Ball. Uh, so, oh, we are going to see a double puzzle of time. Okay. Interesting play from Rob. He could have taken any two cards that he wished. He could have battle compressed away anything. It looks like he just wanted to get that pumpkin boot down. As well as the battle compressor once again. Which is a fair play. Uh, maybe he didn't have a any other basic Pokemon, and he just wanted to get that Punkaboo so he doesn't uh, just lose next turn. Uh, so it looks like he's going to battle Compressor away the three Night Marches. Uh, he's debating it now. Yeah, he's going to take those three. Uh, the other play he could have got was get rid of a Supporter. It does look like he's got a Shaman in hand. So you're going to see an Ultra Ball getting rid of the Shaman and a... Judge or a D-Valley? I can't tell what that other card is. It actually kind of does look like a Dimension Valley, which is an interesting choice to get rid of. It definitely hurts. Matty plays like four or five stadiums himself, uh, so giving up a stadium is quite difficult. You do play the Puzzle of Times, but it's still an iffy thing to do. We've already seen him drop two Puzzle of Times, uh, so it's definitely something you don't want to have to do, but he was probably forced to here just to draw more cards with his Shaman that he's choosing here. He also does have one other card in hand, which I'm not too sure which it, what it is. So we'll have to see shortly what Rob has this turn. Uh, he definitely wants to get a double colors down. Uh, even then, he really wants to knock out this Giratina here. That is his number one goal. If he's not able to knock out that Giratina, then he's going to be in some trouble. We do see that catcher in his hand. Uh, if he's got the double colors and maybe some other stuff, that could be a possibility for him. You're going to see a battle compressor. If he gets rid of three Night Marches, that'll be eight. If he's able to get the Fighting Fury Belt and flip heads on that Catcher, he will have that Giratina knocked out this turn. Uh, so this could be a huge turn for Rob if he's able to pull it off. It does look like he also has a Escape Rope, uh, which could be really nice for him here. Uh, even if he flips Tails on that Catcher, he can still Escape Rope and even just take two prizes on that Shaman. Maybe that will give him an edge of some sort, and maybe he'll be able to come back from uh, Maddie's Giratina, if possible. So we're going to see that Pokemon Catcher here. And it's Tails. And there's the Escape Rope. So uh, if Maddie would have to really go into that chain, and he doesn't have much of a choice here. Um, and it looks like Rob's also going into his Shaman. Oh, so he's got the Floyd Stone. That makes sense. And then a Shaman for five. And Rob really wants to hit the double colors here. He did draw into that enhanced hammer, unfortunately for him. Maddie didn't play the double dragon last turn. And we see a town map, we see teammates, double colors. Uh, Pumpkaboo by the looks of things, a judge, sycamore, and a joltic. Uh, some interesting prizes. Uh, that double colors being prized really does hurt. A lot of the times you don't want to prize those double colors, especially if you're going to be under that Giratina lock and you're not even able to. You know, play that double colors, you really need to get them as soon as possible, and if you prize them, that makes it all the more difficult. Uh, prizing two Night Marches as well is not helpful at all. We're going to see Rob Battle Compressor away, Lysander, Hex Maniac, and possibly another supporter. I don't think he's got any more Night Marches in deck. We've got four, eight, nine in the discard, I believe. And then there's two in the act. Oh no, there'll be eight in the discard. Two prized, two on the on the field. Uh, so I, I probably understand that you guys probably can't actually see what is going on outside of the screen here. Uh, the overlay of the video does cut out a bit, so I'll try my best to explain what is happening. Uh, I can see both players' hands for the most part. Uh, we are going to see Rob go for a trainer's mail here. Yes, a VS Seeker is an option, an Ultra Ball. Uh, VSC would be nice. I don't believe Rob has played a supporter yet. If he was, he did discard that Lysander. If he's able to somehow pull something off here and knock out that Giratina, that's his goal here. That's his number one goal is to knock out that Giratina EX on the bench. Uh, however, if he doesn't have a way of getting some more draw support, then he might 
nope you know he needs to get a double cult regardless even if he's not knocking out the giratina so if he's not able to draw into that there's no point really doing anything else so it looks like he's going to take an ultra ball probably go for a shaman oh he's going for the puzzle of time and a sycamore so that is three puzzle of times gone by rob uh that is tough for him uh, that means everything now that's it he's only got the one limited resource he, no way of bringing those back uh trainers well he doesn't play the one one milotic like some lists do we saw he did discard a d valley earlier and he's playing one now so maddie if he's able to consistently bounce those dimension valleys he'll be in a good position here and the question is did rob draw the double colorless energy and does he even attack this turn? I would say not. He does have the double colorless energy. I would say that you would not attack this turn. You want to wait until that Giratina comes up. However, the problem there is if Maddie has the Lysander, you're still stuck. So we are going to see the knockout from that Pumpkaboo. Maddie throws up that Giratina. He knows he's got the double, double dragon energy. And the Sycamore to draw a fresh hand of seven. Uh, so Matty knew he had that. Uh, I think he had the Sycamore in, as the last card in his hand. Uh, it could have been the Double Dragon, actually, because he confidently put up that Giratina. And now this is essentially game. Uh, I know Rob has the Enhanced Hammer in his hand, I think. We're going to see the Target Whistle, or at least in his deck, but it might have been in that hand that he Sycamore away. We're going to see the teammates. If not, if it's in there, he'll definitely take it here. Um, I didn't also catch what two prizes he took from the prize cards. I think he just took the top two. I can't remember what they were. I think it was one of them was teammates. Uh, I would have taken the teammates and the double colors. That's what he took. So Rob is now going to decide what it is he take with this teammate. He would want an enhanced hammer. He's already played three puzzle the times that we've seen. He could have sickened water away another one, but I, I don't think he would have actually because he did play that last puzzle the time before he sickened uh, so it would have made more sense for him to use Double Puzzle. And we didn't see what cards he took. So we'll find out in a second if there's any help to him here. Ideally, just any way of him being able to stall, whether it be life centering up something, whether it be using Enhanced Hammer. Uh, the unfortunate thing is he's already used too many Puzzle Times for it to be effective. Like... You know, he, he can't just consistently bring back that enhanced hammer. He's only got one time use for it. And he is just going to pass here. So I, I'm assuming he's probably taken the Lysander. Matty's just going to once again attack. Matty doesn't need to do anything at this point. Uh, he's in a comfortable position. He doesn't need to bench anything. He doesn't need to play a supporter. Uh, because he knows that Rob can't get out of this. At this point anyway. Are we going to see the Lysander on that Retroam? Now he's a bit worried, but... You know, he did just Sycamore. He's got a fresh hand of probably eight or... Yeah, Rob's going to scoop. There comes the Hydreigon. Rob scoops. So yeah, Maddox's hand was so big that he definitely had a way of getting out of that. So we are going to go on to game three here. Uh, see, it's a very interesting matchup. It really depends on who's able to get set up first. Rob's going to have the advantage here of going first. That means he's going to be able to have... Ideally, he'd at least have two double colorless energies on there unless we see a first turn Giratina by Matty. Uh, the only thing is, Matty only plays that one Giratina, so if he prizes that Giratina, that could also hinder his chances in this game three. We'll have to see how it goes for both players. A top four out of regionals, the South Australian regionals, the Night March versus Dragon Ray. Uh, the winner of this will be playing Jordan Palmer's Toad Bats deck. Uh, which Nine March doesn't really have a good Toad Bats deck uh, matchup. I should know. I played it at the Adelaide Cities. Uh, pretty much the exact build that you know that Jordan's playing now. A bit different because we had Breakpoint come out, uh, but most of it's still there. I played the Nine March deck. He played Seismo Toad Bats. It's not a good enough matchup for Nine March. Maddie's deck definitely has a bit of a better chance against uh, Toad Bats. However, item lock against any deck can be difficult. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see which player moves on and gets to play against Jordan Palmer. There's a couple of different cards in both players' decks that could help. Uh, if Rob does go second, Maddie, uh, 
Palma starts with the double colors. He might be able to enhance Hammer and buy himself a turn. However, Fighting Fury Belt is the big card here for Rob against Matty, uh, against Jordan. But this is a hypothetical scene. We're going to start game three. And here we go. Matty starts the Rush Ram. Rob starts the Pumpkin. We're straight away going to see a town map. And that isn't very good for him. We see a Dimension Valley and the double colors, which are two cards that he probably really didn't want to be prized at this point. We also see Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, Via Seeker, Ultra Ball, and a Trainer's Mail, I think that last card is. I can't quite make out that last card. It could also be an Enhanced Hammer. We're going to see a Trainer's Mail for the Puzzle of Time. Uh, I'm really hoping that he isn't just going to puzzle the time here. That would be really unfortunate for him. Uh, he does not want to be in that position. We're going to see another Trainer's Mail. Uh, what Rob could actually do here, which could ensure that he doesn't lose this the, the next turn if he isn't able to draw into anything is hex maniac uh it's such a big card uh it can slow matty down uh, as we've seen previously uh hex maniac just locks those um those rush rams down it locks the high dragon ability down and there's a double of puzzle time for two trainers males and we're gonna see one come down here for the ultra bowl And it looks like he'll just be playing the Ultra Ball now. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go play the Ultra Ball now. Um, I think he's just deciding what to discard. He does also have that other trainer's mail. So it'll be... It'll probably take the Shaman here. Uh, it looks like he's getting rid of a Lysander and a Sickle. Taking the Shaman. Probably going to play that trainer's mail before he places that shaman down uh, that is ideally what he'd like to do here and hex maniac as i said it can just really slow maddie down completely it's not going to be like he's going to be able to turbo blaze twice and then get the double dragon energy nothing like that will happen if there's a hex maniac down as we saw in steven filiposki's game uh, he was able to hex like three turns in a row and it just completely locks maddie down uh, we are going to see a fighting fury belt off those trainers belt from rob Onto that pump kaboo in the active position. A Shaman for four. The other big card that Rob has to get down this turn, uh, just in case of that first turn Giratina, or as quick as he possibly can, possibly can, is Dimension Valley. If he's unable to get that, uh, then he can also not play Stadiums, he can't play Tools or Special Energies under that Giratina's attack, uh, which is something people do forget about sometimes. It's not just the double colors that you're losing, it's your Stadium it's your tools, you lose everything because of that Giratina. It becomes a lot more difficult for the Night March player to really get an attack off. If they have a counter stadium, you can't play your Dimension Valley. There's the Hex Maniac from Rob, which is big here, and a pass. So there's a Scorch Earth coming down from Matty. He's going to discard the fire and draw two. Is that a Rayquaza going down with a Spirit Link? So it looks like Maddie is going to be forced here to really use this Rayquaza. Double Dragon Energy comes down. And it could just well be a pass here. It looks like he's got Double Dragon Energy in hand, which he probably doesn't want to be playing. Uh, do doesn't want to be playing that Sycamore. I think he has a Sycamore in hand as well. Uh, as I, I think I saw it anyway. Uh, so he does have double dragons, which is just cards you can't afford to discard with his Sycamore. So that would understand, that would uh, make sense as to why he didn't play that Sycamore if he has a Sycamore. I believe I saw it in hand, but it could have been a mistake. We're going to see a Trainer's Mouth from Rob here. I think one of those four cards was the Pokemon Catcher. Does he take it? Does he take the risk to knock out that Rayquaza this turn? He's desperately digging for the Dimension Valley. Uh, you're going to see a Battle Compressor, which is actually probably what he prefers to take here. Looking at the top of his discard pile, all I can see is those three Lampants that he discarded at the beginning of the game. We're going to see a Battle Compressor discarding a Joltek Lampant and a Pumpkaboo. All three of the Nine March Pokemon getting dropped there. So Rob really needs to find himself a Dimension Rally this turn, if he's even unable to do that. Uh, then that restroom won't even be knocked out here. I'm going to see the VS Seeker for the Hex Maniac once again. And it looks like Rob might just be passing once again. Uh, he's just going to read that Rayquaza real quick. So 
So that Rayquaza can hit for 30, so he can't really retreat into the Joltik or switch into the Joltik at all. Uh, which is probably what he'd ideally like to do, uh, just in case of that Pumpkaboo going down. I see a Scorch Earth once again from Maddie. Double Dragon comes down. An Escape Rope. Uh, so here we go. This is Rob's big decision. Does he risk that Joltik? Does he get rid of the Shay? It looks like he's going for the Joltik, which is the sensible play. Um, you don't really want to be dropping two prizes when you don't have to. And just losing that Joltik, as long as he can get another Nine March Pokemon, he should be fine. The big card's going to be here is can Maddie get the Dragon Rayquaza and a, Mac and a Mega Turbo? If he's able to do that, he'll be in a great position. Uh, he's going to bench the Hydreigon EX. Uh, if abilities were active, he would have been able to, you know, re uh, retreat the Reshiram instead of having to use that uh, Escape Rope. Of course, the abilities have been shut off, so we're going to see an Ultra Ball for the Giratina EX. And here comes the big play. He has already attached an energy this turn. So Rob did Hex Maniac. And I don't think any energy is going down on Sakura Tina this turn. We're just going to see the knockout there from that Rayquaza. It just hits for 30. That's all it needs to do. Rob's going to go up into that Pumpkaboo. Can he hit for the knockout this turn and jump ahead in the prize lead? He really want to be able to Hex Maniac once again, ideally. He does need it to get in a Mansion Valley, though, so there might be a thorn in his side. He might not be able to do it. We are going to see the teammates. Uh, that means he is not going to be using Hex Maniac this turn. Uh, this game could be decided in Maddie's next turn if he has all the right combinations of cards. He's going to need two fire, a double dragon, a switching card, get into the Giratina, and start locking Rob down. Uh, if that's the play that Maddie can make, then I would say that this game is pretty much over. If that happens, uh, which would be really unfortunate for Rob, he's worked so hard to get to this point. Top four, it's always a shame to lose in the top four. Uh, you know, you come so close to winning this event, getting into the finals. So you really want to play your heart out in this final game. Game three as well, it's very intense. He won game one, so going into game two, he's probably quite confident. Uh, Matty was really the one who should be feeling a bit uneasy about going into game three. Uh, we've seen the power of both of these decks. L comes down to... Can Matty get that Giratina down? We do see another double colors on that Joltik, so it might not even matter too much. Uh, at this point, anyway. However, Rob should have enough Night March Pokemon in the discard pile now to be hitting for that knockout. The other play that Matty could make, if he's got the right combination of cards, is Lysander the Joltik. Oh, he might not even need to do that. Rob didn't get the D Valley, so it looks like he's retreating the double colors from that Pumpkaboo. This is a huge turn. Uh, we're going to see the Night March for the knockout. And it looks like he's going to be forced to really take that DCE in the D Valley. It is the Enhanced Hammer as his final prize card as well. No, he's definitely going to take that Enhanced Hammer. He needs to here. This is big. If Maddie's able to pull this off this turn, oh, we're going to see it. There is the Reshiram and a Birch's Observations. If Matty flips ahead, he will be in a strong chance to be able to use that Giratina this turn. And there's Heads. He's drawing seven cards. A Fire Energy and a Double Dragon is all he needs to really make sure he wins this game. Uh, see the Double Dragon? We're going to see the Double Puzzle of Time. We know there's a Fire Energy in there. He's going to take a Double Dragon and a Fire Energy. He's going to Turbo Blaze. He took the Double Dragon as well, knowing full well that Rob has that Enhanced Hammer. So this is it. Uh, is Rob able to find a way around this? I don't think he's going to be able to. If he was able to get a D-Valley last turn and attack with that Pumpkaboo instead of having to retreat it, he would have been fine. He would have been able to knock out that Giratina, and then it would have pretty much swayed in Rob's favor a lot. Um, however, that wasn't the case. He was forced to retreat that Pumpkaboo into that Joltik and get the knockout. This is big. Uh, I don't know if Rob's going to be able to come back from this. He can't even play that Dimension Valley. I didn't take the Dimension Valley from the prizes. We are going to see the Enhanced Summer come down. We know he's got another one. If he's able to consistently use Puzzle of Times, however, and just try and get rid of those Double Dragon energies as much as possible, that is the third Double Dragon to hit the discard pile. Of course, he brought one back, so there's two in the discard pile already. 
Uh, so Maddie will play the third one next turn. He's going to need to double puzzle the time for that enhanced hammer to get rid of that. Once again, I don't actually think he plays a Zerisic. If he did, uh, that could be another big card here. I just don't think it's likely for Rob to get that going, though. Uh, he was likely to pass. We know Maddie's already got that double dragon. He puzzled the time for it last turn. And he's really got all the answers here, Maddie does. Uh, there's the third double dragon energy and an Ultra Ball. We're going to the Mega Ray Quasar. And. Looks like a normal Ray Quasar or the second. No, it's a Mega Turbo. Gonna get rid of the Mega Turbo, Mega Ray Quasar. Probably taking a shame in here. He probably is just trying to get through his deck as quickly as possible. And uh, oh, he's going to take the other Hydreigon. Oh, he's just Sycamore. Okay, so he's just thinning his deck, making sure he does have that other Double Dragon Energy in hand in case another Enhanced Hammer comes down. Or at least a Puzzle of Times to get them back. So there's the hit for 100 from Addy. He doesn't play any Fighting Fury Belt, any mus uh, Muscle Band, so he's always going to be two-shotting a Shaman. Which is awkward, uh, you know, it doesn't happen often that you two shot a shaman. Can Rob get out of this? It's very unlikely for him. However, you never really know. This Night March deck especially is one of the most powerful decks. They're usually able to pull something out. He's just going to pass. We're going to see the Chaos Wheel. Uh, Rob is kind of forced to go in this Pump Kaboo here. gonna see the VS Seeker. Uh, he could go for the teammates here. If he's got the double puzzle of time in deck still, he'll be able to get that enhanced hammer. So it looks like the first card was a puzzle of time. Oh, it looks like he's debating the Dimension Valley. Uh, so he must have the other puzzle of time in hand. A risky play to take that Dimension Valley. He knows he can't play with Chaos Wheel. Uh, so we're gonna definitely most likely see the double puzzle of time. I suppose if there's no other cards he really wanted to take there, it makes sense. Uh, he's gonna need it next turn if Maddie doesn't attack. If Maddie's able to pull off one more attack, however, I would say that it's pretty much game. We're gonna see the puzzle of time, definitely the enhanced hammer. And it looks like he's even debating Hex Maniac. Uh, if he's played any other puzzle of times, I would definitely recommend taking those. Uh, depends how many he's got left in deck. Uh, actually, double puzzle of time, so this is it. It's really up to, does Matty have the double dragon energy for next turn? If he does, it's game. If not, then Rob can still come back from this, despite being down in the prizes. It all comes down to Matty's next turn, if he's able to get that double dragon or not. So we see the pass, a double dragon comes down, and Rob scoops. Yeah, that was uh, kind of expected. The fourth double dragon comes down onto the Giratina. Rob had no other way of getting rid of it. He doesn't play the Xerosic, only the one enhanced hammer. He did all he could to try and make sure it didn't happen. Unfortunately, that Giratina can just shut down this Night March deck if they're not able to keep up with it. Uh, thank you for watching this video, guys. We'll be bringing you the game between Maddie and Jordan Palmer shortly. It'll be Dragon Rayquaza versus Toebats. Congratulations to Rob for finishing top four. Uh, it was a very hard fought match, winning game number one. Uh, it's just one of the problems that Night March does have is that if it's not able to answer that Giratina EX quick enough. It can just lock you down, and you can't do anything about it, so it's very unfortunate for him. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next round.